Warning. Listener discretion is advised. Fireworks, my ass. Hey, what's up, you guys? I had originally planned to release episode 5 as the psychic episode, kind of explaining why I think I'm psychic, why I know I'm psychic, how I know I'm psychic, all of the receipts I have from my whole entire life of instances that I could verify what I was saying was the truth. And I wasn't making some shit up. And I wasn't bullshitting nobody. I was originally going to make this episode about that. And all the weirdness, scariness, and coolness that goes along with it. I had instances of particular cases and time in which I used it to one of my advantage. I had at least five receipts laid out, ready to go for y'all. All of the explanations. But... I decided instead, after witnessing the explosion that happened in Beirut, Lebanon, yesterday, that I was going to talk about that instead. Let me just pay some bills real quick. My name is Fonzie Grouse. You know when I have something to say. Fireworks, my ass. No, there's no way in hot, heavy hell. It would be a cold day in hell where everyone gets iced tea and lemonade before I believe that that big-ass explosion was caused by a firework factory catching on fire. No. Nuh-uh. No way in hell. And that's not even the only story that's coming out right now. There's 50 million different news sources with 50 million different stories and all of these stories are unverified because the the officials that are supposed to release this information don't even know what the hell went on. But what we do know is that so far, 135 people have died and more than 5,000 people are injured. Now, of course, we expect that death toll to rise because hundreds and hundreds of people have been reported missing. So those hundreds of people could be dead and we just don't know. Because we haven't found out yet. And then of those 5,000 plus people that are injured, uh, some of those people could die of their injuries sustained from the impact of this blast. I, I don't know what it is. My gut. I saw the videos whenever they first started making their rounds across Twitter. And when Twitter had originally started sharing the videos around of what was going on, Facebook had them, Twitter had them, we didn't have a whole hell of a lot of information because, of course, they were taken by civilians who didn't know what the fuck it was either. So all of these videos were going around and going viral and going crazy, and no one knew what the hell was going on. And without the context and facts and statements that we have now, I saw those videos and immediately knew in my gut in my instincts, in my intuition, that that was more than just what they were going to tell me it was. I knew that it had to be some sort of bomb. It reminded me of the Moab that was dropped by the U.S. government in Afghanistan on the tunnels that ISIS had used to travel and all of that other Michigas. And you could not tell me Because I did not have the context of an official statement by the yada 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 government. I didn't have all of the facts that we have now. I just had a video. And if you would have told me while I was watching this video that so-and-so had dropped a small nuke, I would have believed it. I would have believed it. I would have accepted it as fact. Because, of course, when these videos were first going around, you could have said anything and I would have believed it. I thought it was out of a fucking movie. I thought it was some sort of college movie, Cloverfield shit, that because of this quarantine, some nerd and a shit ton of sugar-free Red Bulls, and I'm not knocking it because I love me some sugar-free Red Bull, but a nerd and a shit ton of Mountain Dew and sugar-free Red Bull created this footage to, like, spark and promote some type of movie. (laughs) Some sort of independent movie, project, college, whatever the fuck. You could have told me anything without the context of what we know now when I first saw these videos, and I would have believed it. You could have told me that Pakistan had just dropped a small nuke on India. You could have told me that that was 
an Indian nuclear facility that, you know, kind of had an issue. And a, a nuke had detonated from the inside of an underground bunker, and I would have believed that shit. You could have told me anything, which is why the stories that and the statements that are being made right now constantly on a constant update type cycle, I'm not believing them. I'm not taking them for the nut hair close to how crazy the next statement and story that they're trying to release is going to be. Like, at first they were saying it was fireworks, and now they're saying that, you know, port officials knew that there was a ship with confiscative explosive that, that was docked in a warehouse on this port. First of all, even a deaf, dumb, blind person knows that you don't put a ship full of confiscated explosives anywhere near a firework factory, let alone a match. That's definitely a no-smoking area. So how the hell they thought that it was a good idea if this is the story that they're going to try and shove me for the next hour until they come up with something new? If this is the story they're going to try and push me, even I know you put up a goddamn no smoking sign next to that warehouse. No, you're not going to tell me this. I'm, And then fucking Trump, of all people, he tweeted out that, you know, it looks to be some type of bomb and that there would be an investigation and that right there gave me reason to to second guess what I told myself about the situation. Because me and that man are are the North and South Pole. We are completely opposite on everything except banning bump stocks and like four other things he's done the entire four years he's been president. But the, the second he said that, I was like, maybe I am just being crazy. Maybe I am being one of those people that likes to argue about everything, that thinks there's a conspiracy behind everything. And normally, those people look very obviously crazy to me. Like the people that think that they're putting fluoride in the tap water to control American citizens' minds. Or the people that think that coronavirus was created in a lab in Wuhan by the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation. So that way they could swoop in and save the world with this magical, amazing vaccine that they created that really has an RFID chip or whatever the fuck that is going to track us like we're some sort of fucking cattle and it's going to infringe on all of our rights and we're going to be branded with the mark of the beast and all of this other crazy stuff that people think normally i see those people and i'm like you're full of shit <laughs> you're crazy you go home <laughs> get tinfoil and make a hat <laughs> normally i am one of those people very much sane very much no <laughs> Bush didn't do 9-11, but now I'm second-guessing even that. Maybe Bush did do 9-11, so that way he could trick the American people into another war in Afghanistan and the Middle East and Iraq and Kuwait and all of those other good-ass places in the Middle East with all the money and the oil because Dick Cheney happened to be the CEO of a, a shit ton of companies that got military contracts when we went to the Middle East again. Part of me wants to believe that some crazy people from Saudi Arabia got into a plane, used box cutters to take over that plane, and flew them into buildings. Obviously, the part of me who claims New York to be my home wants to believe that that is the story. Doesn't want to believe that the America that I love and believe in and would kill for and would die for wouldn't do something like that to their own people. But I don't trust nobody no more. After I've studied the Gulf of Tonkin incident and the Bay of Pigs situation and how the CIA wanted to fake an attack by the Cubans on Americans so that way we could trick ourselves into invading Cuba, I don't, I don't believe nothing no more. So until I see some hardcore proofs and evidence in the next few weeks, I'm going to believe a goddamn thing they try to tell me. And I'm not sorry about it either. <laughs> Let me see if I can get y'all some numbers. And while I look up these numbers, I just want to apologize to Amira and everyone that saw my weird conspiracy-ridden posts on Facebook yesterday. I'm going to tell y'all what I originally thought. I thought that this was the Beirut in India. And because that is what I thought, I thought this was somewhere in India. Because that is what I thought, I had this idea that it was a bomb 
dropped by Pakistan in India, and we were about to go into some sort of nuclear war type situation, some sort of Cuban Missile Crisis type situation, because India is a nuclear power. India and Pakistan have been at each other's necks for decades, and I had convinced myself that the videos were shot in India, a bomb was being dropped in India, and had there been a plane in the vicinity of the area where this quote-unquote, you can't see it, but my fingers doing the quote signs, bomb had been dropped, India very well could have made the connection that this was some sort of attack and fired off a nuke towards their only adversary in the area, which is Pakistan, <laughs> and started a nuclear World War Three, Because obviously... India is an ally of America, so we would have joined in with India. NATO would have followed, even though I'm pretty sure India isn't a NATO country. But, obviously, America would have sided with India. NATO would probably have followed. If not in all of NATO, definitely the UK, who trades with India really well. Um, Germany, France, Australia, and probably South Korea. And then, on Pakistan's side, most of America's adversaries in the Middle East would have rallied behind Pakistan, and Russia would have joined in, then China would have joined in, then North Korea, with their crazy-ass fucking motherfucker-in-chief, <laughs> would have came in, and then we would have all just started shooting bombs at each other, mutually assured destruction... I would have been doing this podcast from a bunker in two days. That is what I was convinced was going to happen because I was half awake looking at videos, reading conspiracy theories. I thought this was in India. And then I wake up in the middle of the night at like four o'clock in the morning and one of my friends comments on my posts, what does Lebanon have to do with India and Pakistan? <laughs> so of course I go and look and do some research and it turns out it was the Beirut in Lebanon, not in India. So how quick I was to fall down the rabbit hole of nuclear World War Three! <laughs> I just got slapped back into reality <laughs> by a friend of mine who is from America but grew up in the Middle East because her parents are fucking insane. Anyway, I got those numbers according to CNN and the New York Times, who I use to cross-reference the links, because like I told y'all, I only want to give y'all information that I can verify somehow. I'm not going to be like those other biased motherfuckers <laughs> and uh, media and news networks. According to two different sites, right now, we have at least 135 people dead, and 5,000 are wounded in the blast. And we have hundreds reported missing, according to Lebanon's health minister. Now, the search is still on. They expect the death toll to rise still. And the origin of the disaster, according to the site so far. Of course, I told y'all I ain't believe it. But I'm going to read what the damn link says. Apparently, the origin of the disaster began in 2013 with a troubled cargo ship. And right now, everyone's mad because the port authorities knew about this ship that was containing the confiscated explosives. And they just kind of parked it in a warehouse on the port near this firework factory and just let it sit there. Knowing the risks, knowing the dangers it could cause, and apparently according to the link, apparently according to the story that everyone wants you to know right now, which I think is bullshit, the port authorities confiscated a cargo ship, that cargo ship had explosives on it, this ammonium nitrate, and they just kind of parked it in a warehouse on this port, and for whatever reason, the building caught fire and all of these explosives caused the blast. Apparently it shook the earth with the same type of power as a 3.3 magnitude earthquake. About 300,000 people have been displaced from their homes. Hospitals are overwhelmed with injured and dead, with injured and dead people. People for, mi for miles around experienced their window shattering, the earth shaking. People from miles around the blast site are bleeding from their ears, from their eyes. 
all kinds of shit is going crazy. Dude, I just saw it looks like a war zone. I'm telling y'all. This there's no way in hell this isn't some type of bomb or attack. I bet y'all right now, ISIS, even if it isn't an attack, even if what they're saying is true and it's just an accident, I bet y'all ISIS tries to take responsibility for this to try to gum up the fear in their organization because they've been dwindling for the last few years since we started taking an aggressive military approach in the Middle East towards ISIS. And I bet y'all ISIS tries to take credit for this whether they did this whether they didn't do this i'm not saying that but what i am saying is no matter what the true cause was i'm pretty sure isis would be the people to say oh yeah we did that even though we had nothing to do with it really we're gonna try and say we had everything to do with it so that way we can spread our message of disgustingness and make people remember that we exist because y'all are bombing us into submission and we're trying to use this as a as a dog whistle and siren song. Apparently, there's 2,750 tons of this ammonium nitrate. And according to some sources, it had been sitting for six years in that port warehouse without safety measures. Ooh, guys, I just saw another screen, like an aerial shot of the situation. There's a big-ass crater where this building used to be that housed all of this explosive shit. Oh, and it, there, it literally looks like this big-ass bomb was detonated either just under the surface or at surface level. Oh, I'm telling y'all, y'all can't tell me this wasn't some type of bomb or some sort of... Because the way I'm processing this right now is I'm thinking of one of the huge firework factories, kind of like the ones... Oh, kind of like the one near Lubbock. There's one in Lubbock that's huge, fireworks. I'm thinking about one of those filled with some shit on fire going off like crazy. I don't see an entire building worth of explosives igniting all at once. What I see is a bunch of different fireworks going off on their own and causing a situation. Which explains the very beginning of the videos that were going around because there is a building on fire that looks like it's going through hell. There is a building that looks like it has had its fair share of bullshit that day. But then in the middle of everything, when that big blast goes off and causes a mushroom-like cloud and sends a shockwave for miles that injures people's ears, is killing dogs, is killing animals, birds are falling out of the sky, people are being shoved to the ground th two, three, four, five miles away from the site, it I don't see, I don't see some fireworks doing that shit. <laughs> and now this ammonium nitrite, which isn't necessarily related to fireworks in any way, according to one of the other sources that's being released, one of the other stories that's coming out. All of these stories are really hard for me to weave together. Like first it's fireworks, then it's possibly a bomb, then it's an attack, then it's not an attack, it's just some explosives that we put in a warehouse six years ago. What I want to know is if the real story is so bad that they're saying, oh yeah, <laughs> it's not really an attack, guys. Look over there. Do not pay attention to the man behind the green curtain. This is what happened, and they're using this to cover up what really happened. And that's interesting. That's some bullshit I want to get to the bottom to. And <laughs> I want y'all to message me. I want y'all to tweet me. I want y'all to send me direct messages through Instagram, Twitter. My I want y'all to send me emails. I have my information all over the place. Look at my socials. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Snapchat. Snap me. Snap me when y'all see things. Take screenshots and send them to me. I want to see all of the conspiracy theories. I've already come up with my own, apparently. Apparently it was apparently it was Pakistan and Beirut's really in India, and I'm bullshitting. <laughs> but tell me what y'all think. Do y'all really think that this is some firework bullshit, or do you think there's something more to this? Let me know in the comments if you're listening to this on YouTube. Send me a message on Facebook. Tweet me or send me a DM on Twitter. Send me a DM on Instagram or tag me in something. I'm telling you guys, this gravy gets thicker somehow. And I want to know where. Oh, hell no. I just saw some new information. I was going to close out this podcast for the day. But I just saw that among the victims and among the dead is the Secretary General 
of one of the political parties in Lebanon. I don't even know how to say that, but we're going to call we're going to call him Mr. N and apparently he was in his office when the explosion happened and died after being critically injured. Apparently there's an Australian who died, an American was killed. According to officials from those countries, uh, two Filipino citizens also died from the explosion, and eight others were injured, according to a statement made by the Philippine Embassy in Beirut. And 11 other Filipino seafarers are still missing. Ooh, and CNN even says right here in plain English that there have been conflicting reports as to what exactly caused the blast, but that the explosion was initially blamed on a major fire at a warehouse for firecrackers near the port, which I guess would make sense if those firecrackers in that blast somehow made it into the bins in the ship in the warehouse a few buildings away from this firework factory. But that's a little convenient, don't you think? I'm telling y'all, it's a conspiracy! It's a conspiracy! Bush did 9 11! I'm going to close out this podcast a little early, guys. Excuse me while I go and get some aluminum foil to make a hat. Okay, I've made a hat. I've used the restroom. I've had some water. I've had some time to think. Okay. And I'm going to pay attention to this news story. I'm going to find out more information. I'm going to get more information from trusted sites. And I'm going to start paying attention more to this specific story because regardless of whether this was malicious or an act of terror or just negligence on the on the side of the city and port officials who knew about this and didn't get it taken care of before something like this could happen it has sparked my attention and all of my energy right now (laughs) and god knows that i have other things i should be doing right now i should be cleaning this room i should be doing my online orientation for school so that way i can get paperwork filled out and get school paid for but no i'm worried about some people in a country that i ain't ever been to ain't ever gonna be to because that's just the kind of person i am (laughs) i smell some lies here and i want to get to the bottom of it anyway I've had some time to think, and I'm going to take it easy on this one. I'm going to let the reports come out. I'm going to let more information flood in, and then I will make an educated decision based on that. I'm sorry y'all had to deal with my ramblings today, (laughs) and I haven't decided if I'm going to release two episodes on Monday or if this is the one episode I'm releasing on Monday, and then I'm going to release the original episode number five the week after that, or if I'm going to surprise some motherfuckers and y'all get two episodes on Monday. I don't know yet. I'll figure that out. I'm going to sleep on it. It's getting late. I want to go to bed. Y'all have a good week. Pay attention. Be vigilant. Don't take no shit. Don't take no bullshit, especially. And I bet y'all thought I was done, but I'm not. I was going to end the episode right here. This first part of the episode was recorded on Wednesday or Tuesday? Wednesday. It, It was recorded Wednesday afternoon. And today's Friday, and I was doing some editing. I was doing some polishing. I was trying to make the show sound as high quality as possible because y'all deserve good content and quality content. And so I really listened to myself 50 million times before I even put it out there. And then after the episode comes out, you better believe I'm listening and critiquing myself for the next episode. So I was doing some editing today and I realized that the episode was short and we have new information. So I'm just going to shove it in right here so that y'all don't have to wait until the 17th for an update on this information. Now, President of Lebanon just released a statement saying that there is a high probability that either, and this is what caught my attention, that either the incident was caused by negligence and this was a huge accident, or that this was indeed some sort of attack and there was a bomb present 
And that really sent off alarms and all of the bells and whistles in my brain because I pay attention to media, I pay attention to government, and you do not tell your people unless you know 100% that there is a probability that an accident or an incident of this magnitude could have been some sort of terrorist attack, you do not tell your people that unless you are positive that there is a possibility that this was a terrorist attack. If there wasn't a possibility that this was a terrorist attack, the president of Lebanon would not have said that. So that immediately just caught my attention because if I was the president, I wouldn't tell my people that it, it could possibly have been an attack unless there is no doubt in my mind. We have all of the intelligence. All of the reports have been done. And investigations have been carried out. And there is indeed a huge possibility that this was a terrorist attack or this had terrorist connections or some sort of planning behind it, some organization to this thoughtful attack or incident, I would not be telling my people that. So the fact that he went out in front of all of these people on TV and said, there's actually a probability that this could be an attack, immediately <laughs> stamped the letter in my mind, the file. It completely set everything in stone that this was an attack because you do not tell your people that. You do not open up the gates for conspiracy unless you aren't 100% certain that the narrative that is being shoved to people is true. To me, this seemed like the Lebanese government trying to open, trying to keep the theories fluid and the possibilities fluid and not concrete because it opens up, minus the outrage, because there's hella protests in Lebanon right now. And it kind of allows you to say, you know what, we got some new information and this is a terrorist attack or this is really what happened. And we are sorry <laughs> that we told you that this was some fucking bitch ass fireworks. It's actually really smart the way he kind of said, you know what, there actually is a possibility it was a terrorist attack. But it also could have been this thing, and we don't have all the information right now, but investigations are being made, so that way it doesn't piss off the shit ton of people in the streets rioting right now. That is everything I unpacked from a half-minute statement saying, it appears as though this could have indeed been an accident or some kind of bomber attack. And I was like, mm, told you ass, I told you! Anybody ever listen to me? Anybody ever listen to me? I told y'all. And y'all don't even know I told y'all because I just said it because this episode isn't even out yet. Oh, Jesus. It's because I'm psychic. <laughs> Receipt number six. Anyway, we have that information, the president's statement. And it turns out that this cargo ship that was confiscated is a Russian ship. Those were Russian explosives that were confiscated by the Lebanese government. You tell me that the Russians didn't get tired of their explosives being confiscated by a foreign country in a foreign warehouse and being kept from them, so they just sent something over there to blow that shit up and teach them a lesson. You tell me that is impossible. Now, it appears as though the Lebanese government and the Russian government, according to reports, have been friendly with each other, and Lebanon might be Russia's only foothold into the Middle East because Russia isn't really friendly with any of the other Middle Eastern countries. Russia joined with Assad to bomb Syria, and they don't have a bunch of allies in the region. It makes entire sense to me for Russia to want to be involved in making this look like an attack so that they could offer support. Bring in reinforcements, bring in troops, offer aid, all of the things they've done before, and create a base in Lebanon so that they can increase their range of Russian influence in the Middle East. But I don't know. No one likes to listen to me. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. That sounded like some information that everyone needed to know. Anyway, one of the other big stories is that these Lebanese people who, after getting the report that the Port Authority just kind of negligently left all of these explosives in a warehouse somewhere, they got hella pissed, and they are rioting and protesting, and they tried to storm Parliament, and they got tear gas. Like, there's all kinds of stuff right now coming out about that in particular. And it's kind of reinforcing some of the problems that they already had in Lebanon before this blast. 
they just came out of a civil war themselves. They are rife with economic downfall because of this coronavirus situation, because of the fall of the oil prices. The country itself had dealt with a shit ton of other things before this explosion happened. So I can only imagine how tired and pissed off they are at a government who recklessly allowed this situation to foster by just kind of leaving those explosives in a warehouse next to a firework factory. I said it before, even a deaf, mute, blind person knows that that ain't right. Come on now. Anyway, I'd had plans originally to make this a double upload, two episodes today, but now that I've made this episode long enough to kind of suit y'all's hunger for a new episode for this week, y'all still have four other episodes to listen to, I am not going to release the psychic video until next week. I know that that was a question. I probably should edit that out, but I want you to see how I work through things. So, I've officially decided as of Friday that I'm not going to release two episodes on Monday. This is the episode you're going to get. Thank you so much for listening. If y'all have any other information about this Beirut explosion that I haven't mentioned, please send it to me. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I want to see all of the info we can get on this because I want to be as informed as possible when when the next statement is made that I was right this whole fucking time and it was an attack. <laughs> so, right now, this is the episode for Monday. I am planning on pushing the psychic episode to next week. And I still have to release the episode for traumas and abuse. That will be some, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what my plans are. <laughs> but I know that you're going to get all three of these videos eventually. Now, speaking of plans, that leads us into Fonzie's Wisdom of the Day. I mentioned it earlier in this episode, but I just wanted to reconfirm some things with y'all and to elaborate on something, and to repeat myself just a little bit, one of the very few times I like repeating myself, but I'm going to tell you all this again. If you want to know how to make God laugh, you tell him your plans. Because life isn't always going to work out the way you want it to. Life isn't always going to work out the way you planned it to. But you have to believe and trust in the idea that fate, God, the universe, Whatever you call it has a plan for you other than the plan that you have decided for yourself. One of the things that cuts the stress out of my life sometimes is the understanding that no matter how hard I plan for something, life is going to happen to me. It's true. Life is going to happen to me. Life is going to throw me a curveball. Fate is going to tell me, mm, no, sir, not yet, or not this way, or not right now. The Lord is going to look down on me and decide that what I have planned for myself isn't going to be as fulfilling as the plan he has for me. The universe is going to stop spinning one day and decide that whatever path I've chosen on this rock in its rotation around a really hot ball of fire in the middle of an abyss of stars and galaxies and planets is infinitesimal compared to the overarching destiny of the universe. Your plans don't mean shit to nobody. Life has its own plan. Life has its own plan for me. Life has its own plan for you. To me, it seems the best way to navigate the fact that your plans and life's plans or God's plans aren't always going to be the same is to take those hits and those rolls and those speed bumps and keep on going. Adapt that into your plan. Allow that to have space. Allow that to teach you something. Allow any conflicts, any obstructions. Allow them to give you pause, because something might be getting in your way for a reason. Everything, 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 it is math. Everything happens for a reason. And maybe it's to make the big guy upstairs laugh. I don't know. I haven't asked him lately. But what I can tell you is what defines a person is how well they handle those dips, bows, and trades by life, by the universe, by God. There's a quote that I'm reminded of that says that the most intelligent species weren't the species that survived. The strongest species weren't the species that survived, but the species most adaptive and responsive to change. So take the curveballs in life, take the dips and the swipes and the surprises and the speed bumps and you do whatever you gotta do to maneuver around those things, accept them, 
allow them to teach you something, and then carry on. Fonzie's Wisdom of the Day. If you want to know how to make God laugh, tell him your plans. With that being said, we've officially made it to the end of Ask Fonzie Anything. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this entire episode. If you want to hear more, I have tons of episodes posted already, and I'll post new episodes whenever I want. No, but seriously though, usually Mondays, and when the show starts growing, I'll start releasing episodes twice a week or something. If you like the show, it is available almost everywhere podcasts can be heard, including Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Make sure you add, like, subscribe, or follow me on my social media profiles. It's at Fonzie Graziano on everything, so you don't have to worry about missing an episode. Make sure and send me DMs to request episode discussion topics. You can write into me if you need advice. I've been told I'm an infinite spring of wisdom. I can definitely give you an outside perspective. I'll tell you what I would do anyway. And who knows, your letter might be the one I answer in the next episode. Uh, if you like, you can directly support the podcast. There are links in the bio to my Patreon and Anchor Direct. Or you can just buy one of my books. My first book, Glory, is available in print on Amazon.com and Walmart.com. The ebook is available on Kindle. And there is an audiobook available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes.com, I think. But don't quote me on that. Also, my second book, A Raindrops and Other Lullabies, which was originally due for release earlier this year, but it's been pushed back twice due to the coronavirus. It'll definitely be out before the end of the year, though. Uh, if you go to my website, not only can you download and read PDF previews of both books, but you can also listen to a sample of the audiobook of Glory, and if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get an exclusive updates on what I'm working on and promo codes and sales and discount info. And last but not least, I just want to remind y'all to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. Be kind to yourself and others, unless they talk to you crazy. And wash your fucking hands and wear your goddamn mask. I want to go to the bar. We'll get through this together. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I think you're pretty cool. I don't care what they say about you. Bye. Now, in the next episode, I promise I'm going to talk to you all about why I think I'm psychic, why I know I'm psychic, how I know I'm psychic, and all the receipts I got to back me up.